Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. I want to talk about how you can make coins in the later parts and later stages of FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. As we head into the summer, out of team of the season, we've got promos like Summer Heat potentially coming, footies, we've got the Euros, we've got Copa America. There's going to be a lot of great content on FIFA this summer. And of course, if you're going to get involved and participate in some of those SBCs or cards that are put on the market, you got to have coins. So I'm going to teach you guys and take you guys through some ways that you can trade to make coins, but also invest. There's two different things, and I want to talk about both of them and how they both work in the later stages of FIFA. Now, again, a lot of people want coins because of the Euro content, Summer Heat. We remember how insane the SBC content was last year during that Summer Heat promo. And I'm going to actually start off with a little bit of investing talk because that is something that a lot of people like in this game and it's very, very profitable. SBC fodder, if you're not familiar with that term, are the cards that people use most commonly, the, the cheapest cards per rating inside of FIFA. So the cheapest 85 rated cards. Pjanic, Leno, Icardi, Parejo, the cheapest 84s, Tagliafico, Patricio, Idrissa Gay. You get it, right? These are the cards we turn into SBCs. These cards move around all the time on the market. Take a look at this. Idrissa Gay is 6.6 thousand coins. Just last week, he was 10 to 11 thousand coins on both the Xbox and the PlayStation because we had tons of SBCs that came out. The fact that he is now down to 6 thousand coins, if you're somebody who wanted to invest for a longer term hold, there's at some point in the next month, I almost guarantee you, there's going to be a point where this Adrissa Gay card get, gets back up to around 10,000 coins. It's happened multiple times this year. Take a look, 8K to 11K, down to, down to about 7,000 coins again, up to 13K in March, down to 6K, up to 10K in, in April, and then down really low to 3,000 coins a couple weeks ago and exploding to 10K once again. So these cards, yes, they're not as low as they have been all time, but there's going to be tons of SBCs that come out this summer during summer heat and during you know all the competitions with all the content we're going to see. That's going to make fodder go up. Take a look at this 84 rated Socrates from last year. At the end of team of the season in early June, he was 6 thousand coins on both consoles and take a look at what happens in the first couple weeks of summer heat he goes up to 13 thousand coins and i think for more than ever this year in fifa sbc fodder has gone higher than it ever has and investing in this stuff has been more profitable than it ever has think about these icon sbcs that we have here we're getting more and more moments sbcs they're putting higher tier players in uh, we have a Cantona SBC that has 12 different SBCs inside of it. So a lot of a lot of grind to get Cantona. But also what I really think is going to make the market go up in the SBC fodder area are these sorts of packs. We've never had rating or position specific icon packs. And this year, they're going to release all of these that you see in icon swaps. They're going to get released in the game as a SBC at some point. 92 plus icon moments pack. 92 plus prime icon player pick. Icon Moments player pick. That's going to be a huge SBC. 92 plus Icon Moments midfielder player pick. All these SBCs are probably going to come out in the next month or so on FIFA. And that's going to have so much demand on the fodder market on this game. So I want to be here and be early and tell you that some of this stuff is going to be investable and it's going to go up over time. Whether you like to trade with ins and outs with that sort of stuff or a more of a long-term hold invest. You can look at some graphs and look at some prices and really tell that a lot of this stuff is going to go up in price for the long term. And there's going to be peaks and valleys, of course, but uh, those peaks are going to get really high. So that's the first part that I wanted to talk about. But also trading in this game in the second half of FIFA, not investing, right? We're transitioning from investing to trading. Trading is very easy to do in the second half of FIFA because there's less competition on the market. There's a lot of open bids and a lot of undercuts and snipes that sit on the market for a long time. And as we've had these brand new team of the season cards with really juiced up stats released onto the game, they're only dropping in price and getting cheaper, but you can all the time look at some of these cards on the market and look to win them on open bid. This is one of the easiest trading methods that you can do at any time in the second half of the year that is super duper effective. This, this link right here, you go to footbin.com, go down to team of the weeks, click on this, and you'll see all of the different team of the week squads and um, promo card teams that have been released in FIFA with their prices. And it, this is something that if you add three to four to five cards, like to your watch list, I guess you'll say, uh, like, let's look at Tots Premier League. This, uh, this 
Luke Shaw, English left back, Manchester United links, 171,000 coins, a card that a lot of people will want to use in FIFA during the summer, right? It's got good enough stats that people want to use it. Same thing with Cancelo. If you're somebody who has like a couple hundred thousand coins, you can take a look at these cards, like this Luke Shaw, who's 170,000 coins right now. I'm going to take a look on the market at his card. Uh, we're going to go team of the season. We're going to go Luke Shaw. And I'm going to look at open bids because I know I can sell this Luke Shaw card for probably 170 to 180K. As you see here, the cheapest one on the market is 170,000 coins. But take a look at some of these listings and we'll see. I'll just search by all Luke Shaw's, not by price. And we will see that some people list their cards for open bid. And what that means is there's a very low start price. You guys know what bids are. And you can, boom, like this one, 155,000 coins. If you calculate your tax at 170, 175,000 coins, you could potentially make profit on these bids. And if you take a look, especially right now, it's a Sunday, right? So people are selling the, the teams they played with in the weekend league. Add some of these to your transfer targets and use that as like a hub where you will watch all of your cards as they expire, right? So boom, I just set that one on bid. I'm going to maybe set myself a reminder that in, okay, in four minutes, I need to come back and make sure that I look at this Luke Shaw card, right? Same thing happens with even some of these icons. Look at this Essien card, right? He's 320,000 coins at the moment. Somebody bid 310 on that one. I go back here to the 59th. I don't see any open bids, right? But you know, you take a look through open bids on all these types of cards. And you can do that if you have like 20,000 coins. There are special cards on this game. Informs, uh, foot birthday cards. Like there's some really cheap cards out here. Like Bernard Deschi, 33,000 coins. Emre Chan, 81K. Gunter, 35,000 coins. These are the types of cards that get overlooked all the time in this game. Because yes, people look to buy them for their teams and they, they sell, but also people just forget to buy them on open bid. How about like this Diogo Jota, 66,000 coins. When you're looking for players to bid on, I wouldn't really bid on somebody like Jose Fonte or Geikowitz or Navas, or maybe even this Muller. I would try to focus on somebody that people are gonna actually want to buy for their team like this Lautaro Martinez inform, that Jota's a great example. Liverpool, right? Very popular team in the world. Take a look at some of these what if cards. Um, maybe like Regulon as a Spanish left back from Spurs with a lot of pace, right? A very good stat. Um, this Pepe, probably wouldn't look at him too much. This Was card, very good stats for only 50,000 coins. That would be a card if you're on a low budget. I would look to get that on open bids. And also, Try to find some undercuts on Snipe. Take a look at a lot of these uh, promo teams and promo cards. Find some that fit your budget and add like five to 10 to them to your transfer targets. Just learn the price and, and learn what they sell at and then try to get them on open bid for less than that. Always account for your 5% EA tax, right? So if you sell a card for 150,000 coins, then you're gonna have 7.5K of tax on that item because that's 5% of 150K. So really, if you sell it at 150, you're only getting 140 um, 142,500 coins from that net back into your coin balance. So of course you want to buy that card for like 130 K sell it for 150, and then you'd have 12 K profit. Basically that's how that works. So that's what I would do with this stuff. Now you can also fluctuation trade as well. And this is getting a little bit more advanced and it, knowing the market a little bit more. But as I was looking at these graphs as on footbin, you can see here, these guys move around a lot on any given day. Now, we're on the weekend league sell-off, so this Ansu Fati card's probably had a little bit of extra dropping, but you can see that on Friday, he was 1.2 million coins flat, and then on Saturday, he reached a high of 1.245. So you know what? There's not enough fluctuation there for me to try to trade with that card, in all honesty. Let's look at Reese James, English, Chelsea, center defensive mid card. This would be a good card to fluctuation trade with, right? Low budget. We only have like 4,000 coins of tax here. Look at the Xbox market, man. This guy goes from 79K up to 100,000 coins like every day. Look at this on Xbox, bro. This is crazy. Boom. 79,000 coins, almost up to 97. Boom. 82 up to 100. This is a crazy card to fluctuation trade with. Even today, he hit a low of 79K and then boom, went up to 100,000 coins. That's, that's awesome, honestly. Now on the PlayStation, 70K up to about 88, hit 80K a couple times, 74K, hit 80K. So if I saw this card at like 70,000 coins or for this Reese James, or if this wanted to be a card that I wanted to trade with, this would be a really good one to trade with, by the way. Obviously, you have to search by, mid, search by midfielder because you've got a couple different options. So this Reese James midfielder card, 73K, look at that undercut right there. So that's on the market as an undercut 
as you can see, there's a lot of them listed at 78 to to 79, maybe even 80K. Now, if I bought this for 73, I could sell it at 80 maybe and make a little bit of profit. But what I'm gonna do here is look for open bids like this one. So that one had some bids on it, 76K for an open bid there. But what I'm gonna do is try to find some cards um, like boom, this one with a 70,000 coin start price, this could fly under the radar because it doesn't have an, a true open bid. And sometimes like boom, this one has a bid of 70,500 coins on it. In this one ends after the one that's a 70,000 coin. So less bid price here. This one's already bid up higher than 70K, but just because it had a minimum at 10,000 coin start price, more people have seen that. So I'm gonna add that to my transfer targets, come back in 10 minutes and potentially buy that card uh, for 70,000 coins on bid and then sell it for 80K and boom, I'm making it a little bit like five, 6,000 coins basically after tax on that card. So that's how you can be constantly trading on the market. It takes time. It takes a little bit of work, but that is something that is very profitable in this game. And you can do that with so many types of cards. Now, if you're somebody who's on a bigger coin amount, like I am, couple million, right? I'm looking at a lot of icons because icons are still very valuable to this game. People love icons because it connects them to somebody they used to watch when they were younger or a club legend of the club that they support. And also icons get those links, right? They get chemistry with every card on the game. Like I was mentioning, this Essien card, 310,000 coins. I told myself earlier today that if I see Essien get any lower than 310K, I'm buying it because he was selling at 350,000 coins earlier today. So again, just to show you that example and how I know that, I'm gonna search this Essien up on Footbin real fast, show you this card and show you the graph and why I know I can sell it for 350K at some point. And that would be like a 20,000 coin after tax flip, boom. So you can see he was 363K multiple times, went down to 320 and then went back to 350. So he's on his way back down again He's 316 just a bit ago. So if I could find one at 310 and sell at 350, then you know I'm making a solid like 20,000 coins per card after tax on a flip. I like these baby and middle icons a ton because they're very rare. People still like to use them. Some of the best uh, versions of each icon. Like, who is it? Is it uh like Eusebio, Pele, and Cruyff? People like their baby versions sometimes more than the middle and the prime. Uh, so, you know, these cards maintain demand for sure in the later parts of the year. So trading with these guys is going to be good. And that's the biggest thing that I want to talk about today is the open bids and the fluctuation trading, because that is going to be very, very profitable at this stage of the year. So open bids on these out of pack special cards is going to be great. Like this Shaw went for 168. Boom. You could sell them for 180. There's really not a lot of profit in that, but obviously, you know, where his card price is and you know, where he will sell at. So open bids and you just just sniping cards on the market too. Like you know this Reese James right now is listed up at like 73K. Okay, it got bought. So the next cheapest Reese James is 79,000 coins, right? Uh, so we're gonna maybe sit here and this is a popular card, maybe try to sit here and snipe this card for less than 72, 73K on an undercut. That works the best if you're doing just like regular gold cards. Like let's say we're gonna snipe Harry Kane's gold card, which I think he's probably like 30 or 40K. At the moment, it looks like he's like 20K actually. So um, his card is actually kind of cheap right now for a gold card. But this is something that you can do too, is you can try to find these cards. Oh my goodness, I'm struggling with the, the, the price ranges right now. So 28K for Harry Kane. Uh, now I can see at 29,000 coins, the listings aren't even staying up past the hour, right? 52 minutes on the latest listing. So what I'm gonna do here is since we have like two or 3,000 coins of tax, Maybe I'm going to sit here and try to snipe uh, Harry Kane, try to get him at like 20, 23, 24,000 coins, or maybe try to get one on bid for 23 or 24,000 coins and then sell that at 28. And those cards are going to be popping up on the market a lot more consistently than some of those cards like uh, your Reese James Future Stars would just because they're not supplied and they're not in packs. So that's the kind of stuff that I'd be doing in the second half of the year, 100% to get involved and to trade on this market. Now, of course, as we have new cards come out in the game, like if you guys remember last year, we had all of the um, the, the summer heat cards that came out in FIFA 20 when we had the, these players drop on the game. I mean, looking through some of these past special card teams, when we have brand new players that are dropped, right? Like we had the, let's see, what was a good example? We had that Ndombele Summer Heat card that came out last year. What I'd be looking for is link investments to new cards that come out. So like this Alan St. Maximin was a very OP and a very 
um, favored card last year in FIFA 20, he probably shot up in price here in late June. Like, boom, it might have been right here when he went from 1 million coins, like 1.1 mil, when the Ndombele card would have come out because that would have meant that people were doing that Ndombele SBC and links to that card went up in price because people went out and bought those cards and used them in their teams. Now, this is a common trading method that people use all the time during the all year in FIFA 21. But of course, it works really good in the second half of the year as these big time cards come out. Like right now, when I'm recording this video, we're in the middle of Serie A team of the season. So you have a lot of Serie A cards that are up in price. Perfect example is this foot birthday card I'm about to show you right here. This Tamori card, 273,000 coins. This guy was 230,000 coins just a couple days ago, right? 234, he's now 270K. And that is because people knew and, you know, the Serie A team of season cards came out. So he went up a little bit because he is now in more demand, right? Supply, demand. These cards are out of packs. They don't have any more supply. They only have demand. So that's with trading with those kind of cards and buying up cards that link to new SBC players when they come out. That is a good way to trade in the second half of the market as well. But for me, the most profitable way that I trade in the second half of the game for sure is just getting on these fluctuations and the open bids. Again, I stress the open bids because, you know, a lot of times you'll see crazy, crazy undercuts on these icons. Like an icon that goes for 1.5 million coins late in the nighttime. Like this Maradona right here, he sells for 1.29, 1.3 million coins, 1.297 I think is the cheapest one on the market. Okay, there's a couple undercuts, but when when this card expired at 1.191, his cheapest card on the market was 1.3 million coins. That's a profitable flip. These open bids on cards across the entire game are going to be great for making coins in the second half of the year in FIFA 21. And again, I want to talk about SBC fodder just a little bit. I know we talked about it at the beginning, but again, like this Harry Kane card, boom. He just went from like 28,000 coins and now there's a couple at 28,750. So if you got one at a 25K, 24,000 coins, you might be able to buy that and list it up, you know, and make a little bit of profit over and over and over. But with all of the SBCs that we are undoubtedly going to see in the later stages of this game, I do think that the SBC fodder is going to be an incredible, incredible place to trade. Icon Moments SBCs, Icon Moments Player Picks. We haven't had a player pick icon pack in a long time. And even though we're in the later stages of the game, so many people are gonna wanna do a player pick for SBCs like this. And I think they're gonna be coming out uh, almost every single week in the later stages of FIFA 21. So as we're speaking right now, I'm even trying to fluctuation trade a prime Pushkas icon. I bought this at 1.21 million coins. And my card I think right now is like the second cheapest one on the market. So again, even though the game is getting kind of quiet and there's not as many people on the game, there are going to be ways to trade and to make coins in this game of FIFA. Always remember a couple things. That is the tax and then the supply and demand, right? What is hyped? What is are people focusing on right now? If it's SBCs, focus on fodder. If it's not, focus on players like the Reese James or the Luke Shaw, especially in the weekend. During the weekends, it's great to trade with those types of players as people are using them in their teams for the weekend league. So again, I hope that that helps you guys because again, a lot of those trading methods I talked about with the Shaw and the Reese James, you can do that on any budget. You don't have to have millions of coins like I do. You can have 100K and you can do all of this sort of stuff. And if you wanna learn trading too, the second half of the year, this time right now is like one of the best times to dive in, learn the market because it's a little bit easier, right? There's not, not as many people on the game. It's a little easier to make coins and stuff like that. So it's a great time to learn to set yourself up well for the next FIFA, FIFA 22 as well. So that's the video for today, boys. If you did enjoy it, smash the thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate the Foot Accountant. I will catch you guys later. Peace out.